<laughs> you have done the wrong way. <laughs> wow! Hello, MU Cougars, and welcome to Archie's Bites. I'm Leilani Augustine, and joining me today is Misericordia University's 15th president, Dr. Dan Myers. As part of Dr. Myers' introduction to Northeast PA, we will be sampling some boneless bites from area restaurants. And while we're sampling those bites, Dr. Myers is going to share some bite-sized fun facts about himself from questions that you, our alumni, submitted online. Dr. Myers, welcome. That's great, I, I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm looking forward to the wings too. You know, wings is my favorite food. All when I was growing up, I thought it was pizza until I encountered hot wings. And so that's, that's I, I gotta know the wing scene around here. So. Wow, I'm sure you're going to be impressed uh, with the wing scene when wings come back, because right now they're almost like an extinct animal. Right, um, right. You remember the days when they were like 15 cents? They had 15 cent wing nights? Yeah, in fact, I, I'm old enough to remember when it was 10 cents. Ah. So those were the greatest Tuesday nights of my life, I think, so. <laughs> well, we won't be sharing our ages today, will we? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just take a whip of this here. When reviewing chicken wing sauce, it's important to appreciate the bouquet and everything. So. Oh, mm -hmm. it's got some kick. You might like want to get your yogurt out. <laughs> okay. Mm. Are you going to have a vegetable with that? We'll save that and see. <laughs> right now. Mm, it's good. I like it. Give us a background about where you are from and a little bit about your family. Oh, okay. Well, where I'm from, that's that's a when people ask me that I usually say parts unknown because my parents moved around so much when we were growing up. I don't have any place that I call my hometown even. So we lived all over the place from Oregon to New York and Pittsburgh, we lived in Ohio, we lived in Indiana, we lived a bunch of places in upstate New York, and so we moved all over the place. And so, um, actually, when I had got my first job working at Notre Dame, that was the longest I ever lived anywhere in my life. So, um, my dad is a Baptist minister. At, well, he's retired now, but um, and then my mom took it up late in life. She got um, ordained when she was in her 50s, and so I've got two of them. They're keeping an eye on me, so. <laughs> and they pray for you every day. Oh, no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Um, so, yeah, two kids. Uh, they're uh, both going to be in graduate school this fall in Chicago. My son's going to be at uh, University of Chicago. My daughter's going to be at Northwestern, so. So you're going to go for a full dip this time? That looks like it. Sure. Okay. I like that you're adventurous like this. You don't have the taste Here buds comes. of a toddler. Yeah. <laughs> Here comes Inferno. Hmm. Hmm. That's different. Okay. It's got interesting taste to it. You know, hot. I can't have you one up me. I'm gonna have Not to terribly go dip hot. for dip. Not terribly hot. <laughs> so our next question was submitted by Debbie Smith Molesky from class of '75, Stella Baggett from class of '72. Nicole Tranguch, class of 2004, and Marianne Faye Gunnarsson, PhD, from class of 1966. What is your vision for Misericordia University, and how will you guide Misericordia as it grows into its second century? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's great that we're coming up on that anniversary. I think that's going to be a lot of fun and give us a lot of opportunity to highlight the good things that the university does. So it'll be fun to plan that and, and do things with alums and others. Um, there's one thing we can hold our flag very high. It's that students have a great experience here. And I've talked to so many uh, students already, not, not a lot, but the ones I've talked to, I mean, they are really appreciative of what is being offered to them and the opportunities that they have. Along say the same thing, you know, a really transformative experience. And lots of colleges say that, but I can really hear it when people tell me the specific stories. And so, so part of our vision, of course, is to continue doing that 
and to find ways to do it even better and to extend that experience to more students. And so we want to draw students from a wider geographic range. We want to get different kinds of students here at Miss Recordia that will experience that great um, that student life that we have here, that learning experience, and also you know add more to our uh, to, to the richness of our campus community by the different uh, things that they're bringing to the campus. So I, I asked people a lot about the charisms and the mission, and I really wanted to hear how they saw that, they felt that, and they lived that in their daily work lives. You know, so I said, how do you? You know, people talk about that. You, all universities have a mission statement and so forth. But how do you actually experience that on the ground day to day? And people had really good answers to that. I mean, nobody stumbled over that at all. They were <laughs> right there with uh, some kind of story that they felt really illustrated the spirit and the mission of this place. And that was just tremendous to hear and you know, really attracted me to coming here. So. Okay, here we go. I'm thinking we're going to have to go for a full dip on this one. <laughs> there we go. Come here. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, what? You got it? Here we go. Okay. Hmm. That's good. It's not very hot at all, but it has definitely got a different flavor to it that does have a Cajun ring to it. it I is like that. It's spicy. It's good. But not not terribly hot. I think no. very tolerable if you yeah. like hot, but not too hot. I wonder what it would be like if you made it hotter. Mm. Like just put some pepper sauce in there or something. I don't know what pepper sauce would you recommend. I don't know. I just you know I keep one with oh, me just just in case hot things sauce aren't in your pocket. Just in case they're not hot enough. There we go. See how that is. <laughs> I'm messing with the recipe. Okay. Mm. So our next question is submitted by alumna Anna Moravchek Mike, class of 69, and alumna Mary Elizabeth O'Connor, class of 60. And they would like to know, how do you anticipate translating the mercy values that founded Misericordia in 1924 mm -hmm. in current mission priorities? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the mission and the charisms of this university, I've already mentioned it, just really important to me and something that I pursued a lot when I was, uh, when I was going through the interview process. You know, I, I, this wasn't the only university I was flirting with. And, you know, a lot of them, you know, they say these things and when I'd press them on it, I just didn't get this feeling that it was baked into what they were doing but I really did get that feeling here. It really meant a lot to me. So I'm very committed to these values and, I'm, and, I, and I want us to uh, not only continue to express them in the way that they have been, but in new ways as well to ex explore that. And what I often say to people is a lot of places, they'll use their mission as sort of a check on what they're doing. So they'll, they'll come up with something they wanna do and they'll start developing it and they'll go, oh, will that work with our mission? And then they'll kind of, use it as a check and say, well, it doesn't fit too well. Maybe we need to make some changes or, yeah, that'll work. We can make that work. That's great. And I'm glad people do that. I think that's important. But I also want the mission to be the font of new things that we do. And so we start our day saying, what can we do today to make, to help this university live its mission better? And so the mission becomes the source of things that we do. And so we think about what does it mean to be a university and to be enacting hospitality? What does that mean? And, what it, and, and then we think about that and that drives us into thinking about new things that we might do. And so, you know, for me, hospitality is about inclusion and about, you know, welcoming people into your environment. And so it really leads us into a different way of thinking about diversity and inclusion on our campuses and the things that we need to do to make people genuinely feel welcome and to really be a part of the university. That's the core and the root of hospitality. And then we can use that to drive the things that we want to do instead of just checking to make sure we're not violating the mission in some way. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I'm glad that you only flirted with only with other universities <laughs> and gave us the final rose. So <laughs> thank you for choosing Ms. Cordia. Again, Dr. Myers.
Tipsy Turtle. Where is Tipsy Turtle? I haven't heard of that. Well, Tipsy Turtle has a few locations. Okay. This particular location that we visited was in Sawyersville. Whoseville? Sawyers. Oh, Sawyersville? Yes. I haven't heard of that either. Yes. There's so, so much to learn. That is a, <laughs> let's see here. We tried to combine them. What was it? Like a Swarlark Vilston? Because it's Sawyersville. <laughs> Kingston. Oh, and okay. What else do we have? We have Wyoming over there, right? Forty Fort. Forty Fort. I know where that. I know where they're Kingston all, and Forty Fort is. They're all like on top okay. of each other. Okay. 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 So got it. So you, got it. You could quickly like cross from one into the other with it with within a blink. All right. Here we go. I'm gonna wait for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna wait for me, then you're gonna wait for it. Mm -hmm. I see. Oh, I think you missed this one. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna double dip. Mmm. How about that? It does come on later. Mm hmm. Yeah. It definitely had a slow burn. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. You get the uh, nod for the most interesting yes. sauce so far. Yes. Write that one down. Tipsy Turtles. I'm going to go there later. It. And swear, where is it? Swear Swearsville. Swearsville? Swearsville. Swearsville. Oh, not yeah. Sawyer, Sawyer? No, not Sawyer. S-W? Sawyer, yes. Okay. So our, our question mm -hmm. uh, is, mm -hmm. one of your favorite quotes is, be a chipper, not a binger. Uh-huh. How were you inspired by this quote, and how has this influenced your decisions in your career? Okay, well, um, <clears throat> this all came about because um, um, I was... Um, thinking about how to work as a professor when I was first came out of graduate school. And I am a natural binger, meaning that I like to take a big bl a blob of time and just concentrate on someone and work on it 24 hours a day. And that's just how I am. I just, you know, and, and then you take a break and then do another binge later. But when I was starting off as a professor, somebody gave me this book. It was called The New Faculty Member this guy, by this guy. Robert Boyce, and he followed a whole bunch of faculty members through their tenure track period, and he found out that people who worked in that binge style were the least likely to actually get tenure. And people who worked in the chipping style, I called it chipping, he called it working with constancy and moderation. <laughs> um, and, and what that means is you work on your project a little bit every day, you do something significant, but you just, you know, you limit yourself to a certain amount of time or a certain amount of effort. And, but you do it every single day. And there's all these benefits that come from doing that. And he had this chart in the book that showed that some of the chippers uh, got tenure and some of the bingers got tenure. But the people who didn't get tenure, they were all bingers. Every single one who didn't get. So all the chippers succeeded. And I, it, it actually panicked me because I knew I was a binger. And I'd been very successful with it too. When I was in graduate school, I had this crazy three-week binge where I wrote this article. It got in the top journal. It got me all my job offers, you know. And so that was how I worked. And I realized, though, that I couldn't do that when I was a faculty member because you can't just stop and work on something 24 hours a day because you've got classes, you've got students to deal with, you've got, you know, and then you start having a family and, you know, there's all these other things that get in your life. And so the chipping style actually is the one, one that wins. And so I, I adopted that. I tried to turn myself into a chipper and I did it. And I, I got tenure early. I, you know, produced a huge amount of work during that period of time by taking this sort of incremental approach to my work, you know. Well, I am excited to try this because it's a, it's a custom job. I like the flavor. I think it would be good with the, you know, throw some ghost pepper or something mm -hmm. in there. Though. I think it'll be, this could really hold up to a very hot pepper. So, and not to second guess mm -hmm. the chef, but. Our next question submitted by Board of Trustee member Mark Oberstadt, class of 1988. If you could add one thing to the campus hmm. that doesn't currently exist, hmm. what would it be? Wow, that's a tough question. Because mm. um, I'm still learning campus, so I might say something that actually exists. Oh, dear. Uh, I, I have been impressed, though, that there are a lot of things that you might think of 
that wouldn't necessarily be on every college campus, like the climbing wall, mm. you know, out okay. behind uh, Mangelsdorf Field. Uh, I noted that there's a nature classroom or something back there too. I went running through there once. There is. And the, the disc golf course is there. I don't know, uh, you know, one thing that's interesting about this campus is there's not really a little campus strip of stores or things that students would go to that's nearby that you have at a lot of campuses. I think that'd be nice for students if we had, I mean, we have some of that on campus in a sense, but sometimes, you know, uh, there'll be a little strip of stores nearby and a little restaurant or coffee shop or something like that, that it would be nice to have uh, that for students, I think. Um, well, probably the, the biggest omission I can find so far is uh, there's no karaoke lounge on this oh. campus. I mean, what's up with that? Well, we yes. have a member of the board who is a karaoke champion. It's not uh, Mark, but oh, it's, uh, who is this? it's Roger Howell. Really? Yes. I did every, not know this about Roger. Yes, yes. He has told me about it every time we've been together. And so I think he's trying to, he wants to have a little throwdown with me on the karaoke. So. The Sizzler. Mm. 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 Hmm. Hmm. Well, it's super hot though. Not super hot, like just yeah. spicy. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Spicy. It's got a good flavor. It's got a nice full flavor. So if that's what you like. There it is, folks, down at Pizza Bella. Don't miss it. Music seems to be a source of inspiration for you. What are some of your favorite musical experiences? Hmm. Well. <clears throat> I, uh, I am an omnivore when it comes to consuming music. So I like everything, I really do. Uh, if you look at my CD collection, I know, I know, I'm so old, CDs. Actually, I have CDs, I have LPs, I have cassettes, and I have eight tracks. But uh, so the way I buy CDs and things, I just go on eBay and I type in, you know, CDs lots. And then somebody will be selling, basically selling off their CD collection. And I'll just buy it. I don't even, I don't even know what I'm buying. And, and I, I think that's a great way to experience music and to discover new things that you, you know, don't typically run into. However, I mean, truth be told, like I grew up in the classic rock and the hair metal era. And so I really do love that kind of music. And I'm in a band, I'm in a couple of bands actually, but the one I'm in right now, uh, we're gonna be playing at the end of the month. And these were the, the guys I was in my first band ever with. As we started when we were in eighth grade, and we played some gigs and stuff as when we got a little bit older. But we figured out, we were together a couple of summers ago, and we figured out our first ever gig was July 3rd, 1981. And so we're having a 40th anniversary uh, reunion performance. It's a little more moist, at the, or you know, wet, I guess you'd say, in wing terms than some of the others, but that's good. Or hot. Mm. Yeah, this is a very traditional wing sauce with vinegar mm -hmm. and vinegar and butter. Mm -hmm. Our next question was submitted by a staff and alumna, Elizabeth Pedro. What music do you like to listen to? And what are some of your favorite songs? I mean, you know, like I said, I, I, I love all kinds of music, I really do. And I, I've been involved in lots of different kinds of musical groups and things over my uh, lifetime. And, um, you know, so, I mean, I, I always balk a little bit when people ask me for my favorite band or my favorite song or something, because there's just so many I like and they're so different from each other. And um, I really love Rush. I think it's an incredible uh, band. And even though Neil Peart, the drummer's passed on, now, I mean, their music is just so amazingly interesting from a from an instrumental and a you know a technical point. Uh, that I always really like that. So, um, but I do like I, I make playlists and things of things that I like, and I'm going to make one for uh, I'm going to do a guest uh, playlist for campus ministry. I'm actually stirring it up a little bit. We're getting to the point where these have been sitting around for a little while, so we gotta make sure we're getting the full effect here. <clears throat> mm -hmm. It's good. It's um, 
It, it's that it's that vinegar combo mm -hmm. one again. Now maybe it's just me. Maybe my taste buds have been killed mm. over all these years of eating wings. But From uh, the Texas Pete. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. So you know, ramp it up. All <laughs> right. And our question from Bill Jones, class of 1985. Mm -hmm. From your days at Notre Dame, you know they are involved in the Center for Homeless and in the community in St. Joseph's County. Mm -hmm. What are your plans and or thoughts on engaging Misericordia in the broader community here? Well, I know you already have a lot of uh, service things that happen with students going out and doing things in the community. I think that's fantastic. And so we want to continue to support that. And we were just talking today in our uh, President's Advisory Council about how we're going to participate in some United Way uh, things coming down uh, the pike here in the fall semester. But um, yeah, so anything that we can do like that, uh, those kinds of opportunities, of course, I'd be very supportive and be happy to participate in them too. Um, I, I think we also need to just, in terms of what we offer in terms of education, is to really be in touch with the people in our community, the business uh, businesses and so forth around here, and really be understanding what they need in terms of uh, the labor force that we can help produce through um, the education we provide here. And so we'll be trying to do some things too, uh, to, as we're thinking about new programs to develop and how we might pivot some of the programs we have to help them meet the um, demands of today's work work workforce. So. Boom sauce. Mm. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm. It's good. It's got a little bit of kick to it. Okay, our question submitted by Dr. Steve Braskowski, who is also an alumnus, class of 1985. Mm -hmm. What principles or wisdom have you learned from your practice of running mm. that's translated into or positively impacted your life? <laughs> um, wow, that's an interesting question. I, I, you may not know, or you may know, because I talk about it too much, but I have a running streak going. I haven't missed a day in, at the end of this month, it'll be nine and a half years. I've run at least a 5K, 3.1 miles every single day, ranging up to about 18, 18 miles or so on, on, a, on occasion. Not often, but, um, but anyhow, there's something called the Run Streak Association where they keep track of this. You have to submit your running logs and sign affidavits and things, and um, and so uh, I'm some I'm somewhere around 500th on the all-time list of run streaks. So yeah, I'm not to the 500 yet. I'm, I'm aiming to break into the top 500 soon. So um, but it's uh, it, you know it's a it's been a fun thing. But I I did it originally just because I was not exercising enough, and I just thought oh, I'll just run every day for a couple weeks and get myself back in the groove and. And then it's, you know, two weeks came and that's a why stop and then 30 days and 60. And then, you know, the streak kind of has its own momentum at that point. So, but it has been a lesson in persistence. Um, there have been times that have been very hard to do it in the middle of a blizzard. And um, I broke my toe twice during the streak and I had to, you know, tape it up and run. And, um, and you know, lots of things. I got hit by a car once when I was running, and I've been sick. And you know, the, you know, I got trapped in an airport once and had to run back and forth in the the connector tunnel to get my run in. You know, um, but uh, you know, it's uh, I, I don't know if it's taught me, but it's made me appreciate more the value of that kind of persistence of doing things and kind of going through some pain to to make something happen that you want to. And now, I mean, this thing is unstoppable because of the tough things I've had to go through the injuries and so on it's got to be something worse than that to make me stop now so I'm no longer the kind of person that's like oh it's too hot out today I'll just let this one go and wait till tomorrow no I go out and do it you know uh, if it's you know 11 o'clock at night and I haven't done it yet I'm gonna head out you know and so uh, and so I think that's a great it's a great practice to have in your life where you have something that you're committed to enough to do it in that really consistent way and it produces this kind of discipline I think that's very useful and other things that you have to do that aren't really that pleasant. Sometimes people say oh you must really love running and th the truth is I don't love running. I don't like it at all actually. What I like is having had run. <laughs> I like being done with my run for the day but I don't the process of it I don't like but but it's something that is really good for me and it allows me 
incidentally, to eat wings <laughs> <laughs> because I burn them off the next day. Anthracite impressed me, hurt me. You heard it here. He asked to be in pain. Mm. Yeah. That was definitely the hottest one we've had. Okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's good. I might need my veggie. Yeah. Get your yogurt out. It's time. It's very good. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> You're down the wrong way. <laughs> wow. I'm going with the yogurt. Cheers to you, Anthracite. <laughs> you did it. Mm -hmm. Woo! I feel like Will Ferrell. <laughs> now do this. And a celery stick. Woo! That's good. That's mm. what I like. I want to be hurt. Okay, I haven't had Milk. that. I had some other sauce there. It must have been a little bit further down on the scale. That is good. Anthracite, coming oh. for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm still watering from all of my work. <laughs> wow. Let's have a little blue cheese, the great neutralizer. I don't know, it's not helping. Wow. All right. I don't need to add any Texas peach to that. Uh, no, please don't. <laughs> I don't think we need to add anything. Why don't you like butter on your pancakes? I didn't say I didn't like it. I just said I don't put them on. No, I, I don't. When I was little, I just like, I didn't understand why people wouldn't butter on their pancakes. I couldn't taste it. I mean, you know, probably because my parents made pancakes by pouring the batter in bacon fat. Okay. But, you oh. know, like, so, so I just like, why are we doing this? Just give me the syrup. I'm good with that. Bacon so. fat, good on everything. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right. How many U.S. states have you been to? 49. 49. Yeah, wow. and it was funny because yesterday we were over in the art gallery and the governor of Alaska comes walking in the room, the only state I haven't been in. So embarrassing for me. Well, <laughs> now, now you have to go, right? I do. I was, I was kind of hinting around to him. I thought maybe he might fly me out or something. But Why do you own seven police batons? Well, uh, my research is about riots and protests. Okay. And so I did collect up a bunch of different things to demonstrate when I did public lectures and things I would kind of just I have some riot helmets and you know different kinds of gear that police use to protect themselves in riot situations so I kind of collected up these it's, it's a historical set of police batons that go back to the 1700s and it's really interesting to see how they've changed over the time and how uh, the training and things that uh, police officers get in terms of how to use this equipment uh, when they're you know not just dealing with um, riots but just in their everyday work as well so so i will bring them to a lecture and show them to people and explain um how they've changed over time yeah do you like squash a squash <laughs> the, or the does game it make you or squeamish? the food no the i don't food. like squash my parents had this oppressive gardening regime when i was growing up and they always had a gigantic garden and they'd make us go out there and work in the garden on saturday and some things you know we just just never kind of clicked with. And squash is one of them for me. I really don't like squash. No offense to the squash growers of America, but it's just not my thing. I'm, I know it's very good for you though. So eat your squash, people. Just don't give me any. <laughs> I'm, I'm not crying at your response. I'm still crying from the heat. <laughs> I still have ouchies. Um, should pineapple be on pizza? No, of course not. Oh, no, I don't. Why? That's not my thing either. What pizza? Why come pizza's Italian? Pineapple, gonna... ham, cheese, sauce, all good things. Have you tried There's it? There's a lot of things that are good things, but you don't put them together. Sure you do. Yeah, like when you put motor oil on your pizza <laughs> or shoe leather. Pirates or ninjas? Pirates or ninjas. I, I, I'm, I'll go ninjas just because I don't know why. <laughs> Summer, spring, fall, or winter? Oh, gee, that's tough. I used to hate winter until I learned to ski, and then I kind of I started liking winter. But I really do like the fall, and 
part of it's just the Christmas of the air and everything, but it's also that time of year because I've always worked in colleges and universities. It's the time when the students come back to campus and they bring all this energy with them and they light the campus back up. I just absolutely love that when everything's getting started back up in the fall. Who would win in a fight? 50 duck-sized horses <laughs> or one horse-sized duck? <laughs> 50 horse-sized ducks or what? What's the option? 50 duck-sized horses. Which duck-sized horses? Or one horse-sized duck. Oh, absolutely the horse-sized duck. <laughs> Those big feet there, just stamp them right out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, Dr. Myers, this has been really great. Um, our, to our alumni, please don't forget to follow us on our alumni social pages. Keep up with any uh, in-person and virtual events that we will be hosting. And stay tuned for a meeting with Dr. Myers at a future event, whether in person and or virtual. And Dr. Myers, some closing words for our alumni. Oh, just can't wait to meet all of you. Uh, get back to campus whenever you can and stop by and see me. Come for all the different events. I'll be around and I'll really look forward to getting to know you and hearing your stories about Miss Recordia. <laughs> Woo!